OK, the other thing, albedo. Albedo of the Earth is roughly 0.37. The albedo of a planet is the ratio of the energy that it reflects back into the solar system. The Earth reflects 37% of the energy that it receives from the sun. So a, a certain amount of energy comes from the sun. The Earth absorbs 73% of it. It reflects 37%. A perfect black body absorber has an albedo of zero. So if the Earth was like black, very, very black body, then it would absorb uh, most of the energy coming from the sun, 100%. It would not reflect anything back. So it would have albedo of zero. And a perfect reflector like aluminum has an albedo of 1.0. OK? Let me show you here. Complexity of what is happening. A certain amount of energy is coming from the sun here. 15% of the energy coming from the sun is absorbed by the atmosphere. And the atmosphere warms up due to that. 5% scattered by the atmosphere to the ground. So the atmosphere sends it to the ground. 23% of the energy of the sun goes directly to the ground. 22% of the energy goes through the clouds. Imagine there's a cloud layer here. 2% is absorbed by the clouds. So part of the energy is absorbed by the clouds. 2% is reflected by the ground. So some of the energy comes and is reflected. We can say roughly between 2 to 6% is of the energy is reflected by the ground. OK? Uh, then we have here 24% of the energy hitting the clouds is sent back. 24% reflected by clouds. 7% scattered by the atmosphere. So basically, here's what's happening. Out of all the energy coming to the Earth, 7% of it is sent back, roughly, by the atmosphere. The atmosphere reflects it. 24% is sent back by the clouds. About 2 to 6% sent back by the ground. If you add 2, 24, 7, you're going to get um, 9 plus 24. You're going to get 33%. If you add 6, 24, 30, 37. So roughly, albedo of Earth, uh, roughly probably between 33 to 37%. Okay. <clears throat> if the Earth absorbed a lot more, Let's say it only sent back, let's say the albedo of the Earth had been, um, let me see, let's use this darker one. Let's say the albedo of the Earth had been 10%. What would that mean? That means a lot more of the energy would stay in. Only 10% would be sent back. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? What would happen to the temperature of the Earth? A lot hotter. The Earth would be a lot hotter. You probably wouldn't like it. <laughs> you know, it would feel like a desert all the time. Okay. And if the albedo had been, so we said this one, the Earth would be hot, hotter. What if the albedo had been 50%? or 60%. That means half of the energy coming to the Earth would be sent back, or 60% would be sent back. Then, of course, it would be cooler. OK? The Earth would be cooler. So if you guys have heard at all anything about the news, they say, oh, global warming, global warming, global warming, carbon dioxide emission. We are causing global warming. Well, what they're trying to say by that is that the carbon dioxide that we are releasing to the atmosphere, it's, it's making the atmosphere trap more of the heat. You see here where it says 15% absorbed by atmosphere? So what we're afraid of is that when the carbon dioxide goes up, it absorbs more energy and doesn't allow the ground to reflect back. So instead of reflecting a lot of it, it absorbs it. So we're afraid that the carbon dioxide will cause this problem. 
our albedo eventually to start decreasing, 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 you see? So maybe from 37% going down 20, 30, 28, 26, 24, 30, you know, 22, 20, eventually. And that's bad because when the temperature of the earth rises a little bit, what happens? The glaciers start melting, the levels of the oceans rise, islands start getting flooded, all of those things, sea life dies. So if the temperature goes down even a little bit, it's dangerous, okay? So that's something that we have to always monitor. We gotta make sure that the albedo is just in the right place, not too hot, not too cold, okay? Because life has evolved on the Earth to accommodate the, t the present temperature. If the temperature changes drastically, it's gonna change life a lot, you see? So when, we, when you guys are reporting on the albedo of your own planet, tell us what it is. Tell us, is it hotter than the Earth or is it cool, colder? And you can compare the albedo to the Earth's, okay? Okay, some of the other data of the Earth, which I'm just putting here, but I'm not going to talk about them much because we have talked about these before already, okay? So I'm not going to even talk about them. Eccentricity, remember we talked about that when we talked about the orbit of the Earth? Eccentricity is 0.017, how elliptical the orbit of the Earth is. Obliquity of the Earth is the tilt. That's what causes the seasons, right? 23 and a half. The distance from the sun, 149.6 million kilometers, 1 AU. Inclination of orbit to the ecliptic. That means as it goes around the sun, the orbit that it makes, well, by definition, we call that zero degrees inclination because we're calling the Earth's orbit the reference frame to compare everything else to. So by definition, that is zero degrees. Average orbital speed as it goes around the sun, 29.6 kilometers per second. That's how fast the Earth is traveling around the sun. Rotational period, the time for it to go around once around its axis, 24 day, hours, which is one day. <coughs> so when you're comparing your own rotation period of your planet, again, compare it to Earth. When you're comparing the orbital speed, compare it to Earth. Precession of axis, we talked about that way back when we were doing constellations. We said every 26,000 years, the Earth's axis spins around like this and it precesses. Okay, with that, we're kind of done with the general data, okay?